Extending CodeKit to handle custom file types is easy. There's just two steps. Here I've added a project to the app, and in there there's one file, main.xyz, totally made up file extension. Now obviously CodeKit doesn't have any built-in processing for .xyz files, so when it saw this file in my project, it set the initial output action to copy, without processing, to a default output path, which because this project uses a build folder, is just build, slash, and then the name of the input file, main.xyz. So the first thing I want to do is tell CodeKit what these settings should be by default for XYZ files. To do that, I'll simply open Project Settings, go under Languages, and into the Other category. I'll click Add, and then enter the file extension of the file type that I want to manage, which is .xyz. Click Add again, and what I'll see are the same default output action and output path options as I get for every language that's built in to CodeKit. So here I'll say, all right, I want to process .xyz files. I want to mirror their input path into the build folder. But you know what? XYZ files actually compile to .abc files. With that done, I'll click Apply Changes to Existing Files and just make sure that it actually happened. Main.xyz will now process to build slash main.abc. The second step is just to tell CodeKit exactly what to do when it processes XYZ files. And for that, I'll open Project Settings, choose Hooks, and click Add a New Hook. I'll come down here and say, hey, whenever a file name ends with .xyz, I want CodeKit to run the following shell script. I can also make it an Apple script, but generally you'll probably use a shell script. And let's say that I have something on my computer called XYZ Tool. This is a node package or maybe a Ruby gem, whatever the thing is that I've installed that compiles XYZ files for me. And these tools generally have option flags, and the way you get that information is just in the terminal running the help command on the thing. So for example, node dash dash help gives me a long list of option flags and how I'm supposed to use the tool. But let's say XYZ tool might have option one and maybe option two, and I write them just like I would if I were working in macOS's terminal. There's usually a special option called dash dash out, or it might be just dash o, and what this is, is, hey, when you're done compiling the XYZ file, I want you to write the output to some path. If I were in the terminal, I might make this user slash John slash project, you know, main, main dot ABC. Well, I want to pull the output path from CodeKit. How do I get that? It's very easy. CodeKit is going to set some special environment variables before it runs your hook. So I'll just type dollar sign CK output path, just like this in all caps. And what this will do is substitute in the output path of whatever file is currently running this hook. And then finally, a last option to these tools is generally the input file. What file should it run on? And again, there's a special environment variable for that. Dollar sign CK input path in all caps with underscores. And what this will do is run XYZ tool with these options and put the output to the output path in CodeKit. And this is the input path of whatever file triggered this hook. So now we're all set. We can go back here and just get to work. And as we save our .xyz files, CodeKit will run that hook and write the output to this path. If I work with .xyz files in a lot of different projects, it can get a little tedious to add the output rules and the hook for every project. Well, it doesn't have to be. All I'll do is come up and select File, Edit Defaults for New Projects, and add them once here. I'll come down to Languages, select Other, enter the XYZ file extension, and then go into Hooks and add a default hook for XYZ files. And now every new project I create in CodeKit will automatically inherit those output rules for XYZ files and the hook that processes them.